Hello everyone, this is the World of Tech here, and today I'm going to be talking about developer options and how to get them. So first, you click on About Tablet if you want to access developer options. You click on Build Number seven times or until it says developer um, options are available or something like that. I've already done that, so it says no need, you're already a developer. So I just click back, and then I go to Developer Options. Now a lot of these options are, um, you don't really want to use them, you don't need to use them, and let me, I'll just go through most of them, I won't get through all of them, but I will try to get, um, go through most of them. Okay, so first we have Desktop Backup Password. So, what that is, is when you go on your desktop and you want to save files um, to your uh, tablet, you can connect your tablet to your laptop. And it will say, uh, it will ask you for a password before you do that. So there's the pass, you, you can create a password. It's really a good option if you want to uh, keep your files safe. Okay, next we have stay awake. That's basically, it is what it is. It's stay awake. Screen will never sleep while charging. So I don't really know why you would use that option, but... I guess it could be useful. Oh, and then we have enable Bluetooth HCI Snoop Log. So, um, what that is, is it bas basically, um, it's used for a developer, and if they want to, um, analyze the Bluetooth file, they can, um, enable that, and it will, uh, transfer all that information to a file, and they can analyze Make sure everything is going well, everything is running good, and there's no security issues. Then we have process stats, which is just, it's geeky stats about running processors. So if you click on that, okay. So it will tell you uh, what is running, what, like YouTube, if I click on YouTube, it will show average RAM use, 33 megabits megabytes, maximum RAM use, 34 megabytes, and runtime. So that is useful for sure if you want to see what is slowing down your device or if you have any big apps. Okay, then we have USB debugging. And uh, what that is, is when you connect your uh, tablet to the laptop, it will automatically just go into debug mode, which is it will connect, and you won't have to authorize anything. I believe you don't have to authorize anything from that. And then we have revoke USB debugging, and that takes uh, all the computers that you have authorized, because in the first part you do have to authorize, no matter what, you have to say this computer, you know, all that type of stuff. But if you want to um, delete that authorization, you just go revoke USB debugging authorizations and it will delete all of your authorizations to any uh, laptops or computers. Okay, uh, now allow mock locations. Um, what this will do is it will, this is probably my favorite one, it will create a mock location. Your phone will send out a false location signal and yeah, that's pretty cool. Especially when you have apps like uh, they are wanting to know your location, but you don't want to give that um, information up. You can use that. Okay, now let's go to um, select select debug app. So what that does, it's right there, right? And then you take an app. And it will debug it basically. Make sure it is running smoothly. And it will make sure that you everything is going smoothly. And the app is uh, running as it is supposed to run. So that uh, that uh, that uh, option is you wouldn't really use that unless you were a developer. So then we're going to do hmm. Let's go to. Let's go to show touches. What this does 
is it kind of creates a mouse type of thing on your screen. So whenever you touch, it shows where you last touched. So that's pretty cool. Oh, what? And then next we have pointer location, which will um, sh show the current data data on the screen. So if you can see it up there, and that's that doesn't really affect anything. So that's a fun one to mess around with. Both of those are. And then we have show surface updates, which when anything updates, it will flash. I'll show you like that. So this is really annoying. I don't know why you would use it, but that's something that's kind of interesting. Okay, then we have show layout bounds. And this, when you click on it, it shows you where to click and then what would happen. So this is kind of cool. It's like, so if you click on that, So show layout bounds, it shows clip uh, bounds, margins, stuff like that um, of the laptop, or I mean of the tablet. Okay, then we have forced RTL layout direction. And this one, uh, this one's this one's pretty cool, let me show you. It will switch around the whole screen. This one's fun, it doesn't really do anything to the tablet, but it's fun to mess around with your friends or something like that if you wanted to play a prank on them, just switch everything around. Okay. Next, we have window, window animation, transition animation, and animator duration scale. These all, basically what you want to do is turn them off because your tablet will run a lot faster and smoother if they are off. So, then we have simulate second, secondary displays. This is definitely my second favorite. And this one's fun to mess around with. If you uh, click one, it will create another display, another screen. And here it is. And you can just click it again. And move that screen down there and click none. And it will go away. Or you can click this one and it will create a bunch of screens. And of course you don't want that. So you probably want to get rid of that. I don't know why you'd use that, but it's still kind of cool. Now we have forced GPU rendering. GPU is the kind of like the graphics in the uh, in the tablet. So this is useful if you want to play a game with that does not have 2D drawing or 2D. Um, you know the app does not have uh, 2D animation, and that works pretty well if it's a certain game, but if it's not, then you're going to be in big trouble because it can mess up the game. Okay, show GPU view updates. So, this, what it does, it basically tells you what, um, what the computer is using, like, for the graphic, the, what, how the graphic card is working. So, it will show you that all of this is run by graphics. You have to have graphics to show an image. So it's showing you that the graphics is working on all of these when you move down. So that's kind of a fun thing. That doesn't hurt your uh, laptop at all. Or I mean tablet, sorry. Okay, then we have, let's do, okay, let's do force. 4x MSAA. What this does is, if you press it, it creates a better um, not performance, but it creates a better um, animation. It looks nicer. But what it doesn't do is it it doesn't make your tablet faster. It actually makes it slower. So you pay a price for that. Okay, let's go down to um, this one right here. This one, actually not sure what this one does, so we're going to just skip that one. Okay, next we're going to go to strict mode, enabled. This, uh, what this does is it flashes uh, the screen when apps do long operations on main thread. So an app is, a uh, big app is on a main, uh, you know, a main, I mean, a processor or something like that. It's a big app, it's running. It will, uh, it will show 
that. So that's well, I mean that's kind of useful, I guess. And then show CPU usage, which shows you. I don't know if you can see that right there, but it shows you all the usages in that your CPU is running. The CPU is basically the central. It is the central processing unit, and it's like the brain of the tablet. So it will show you how it's running and stuff like that. So that doesn't really do anything. It's a cool thing to have, though. Okay, let's go to... Oh, yes, this one right here. This one is a fun one, too. What it does is it shows your graphics performance on the screen. So it shows you how well um, how well it's going, how well it's, how well it's working. So this is a pretty cool... Um, a pretty cool, in my opinion, pretty cool app. Okay, so next app. Let's go to. Hmm, we're going to go to. Let's turn this off first. Um, off. And let's go to. Don't keep activities. And that's basically, it is what it is, it's don't keep, it destroys every activity, so as soon as you leave it, some, uh, as soon as you leave something, it destroys all uh, activity there. Now, this, um, I've never really used it, probably won't, unless you're being really secretive or something, that's the only time you, you would use it. Okay, then we have background process limit, this one's another, uh, strictly for developers, probably, you could use it, but. Unless you're a developer, you probably shouldn't mess around with it because you could create serious problems. But basically, what it what it is is it you can choose how many processors you want running in the background. So just stick on standard limits, and that's uh, probably the best. Okay, this one right here is um, show all A and R S. Or just show all A and R, and this is if an app is not responding or something like that, it it gets hung up or something like that. Um, it makes every processor show an app not responding dialog if it gets um, paused or uh, something like that. So that one uh, is useful actually if you want to know what's going on. Okay, so thanks for watching. I know I didn't cover everything, and uh, please comment if I made any mistakes. I know I might have, so but I tried my best. And uh, make sure to comment, subscribe, and um, and like. Okay, um, next time I'll probably be doing a review on this tablet, which is the Nexus 7 first gen. So definitely um, watch my video coming up on that. Okay, bye. Have a nice day.